Good morning students. Welcome to the digital classroom with Holy Heart School. Today is our third day with our topic water resources. In day 1 and day 2 video we have already learnt about the meaning of the word water resources. How water is important for living beings? What are the different sources of water on the earth? What do we mean by the word irrigation? How irrigation is important for India? why we need irrigation and what are the factors develop needed for the development of irrigation in day 2 video we have started up with the methods of irrigation under which we have learned that there are two methods of irrigation one is primitive method and one a modern method today we will be learning in detail about one of the primitive method that is today we will be learning about canal irrigation about the conditions necessary for digging canal about types of canal which includes in inundation canal and perennial canal under which we will be also learning some new words like canal canals means channel duct to carry river water to dry areas and fields drain means a stretch of land especially with regard to its physical feature where a low dam built across a river to raise the level water upstream or regulate its flow barrage an artificial barrier across a river to prevent flooding example faraka barrage across river ganges in west bengal embankment a wall of stone or earth that is built to stop a river from flooding or to carry a road or railways canal irrigation before starting up with the canal irrigation let's know something about this topic actually it is very interesting for all of us to know about these means of irrigation largely because most of us who are belonging to the urban settlements are not more exposed to the rural life so this is very interesting to know how different ways of irrigation work they are invented developed in order to ensure that you have water supply 12 months around not only for 4 months when only it is raining so one of these methods is canal canals are the channels dug to carry river water to fields these are mostly this can be perennial canals or inundation canals these canals are useful for every farmer because it is providing them water throughout the year so let's start up with the canal irrigation Canal irrigation amounts to about forty percent of the total irrigated land in the country. This type of irrigation is more prevalent in the northern part of India. When we think of digging out the canal, we need fertile soil where the canals can be dug out easily because it is very difficult to cut or dig canals on a hard rock. And second most important thing that is needed is water supply. that canal should have water supplied throughout the year this type of irrigation is more prevalent in northern part of the country where the rivers are perennial perennial means that flow throughout the year and flow through flat terrain means land surface so conditions necessary for digging canal that i have already talked i will repeat again number 1 for the flat land fertile soil number 2 perennial so so that it can have water throughout the year conditions necessary for digging canals the two main requirements for canal irrigation are low level relief with deep fertile soil because it makes us easy to dig the canal in that area number 2 perennial source of water that is no fed rivers which may be used for the development of canal irrigation the water from this river is stored by building a dam or weir house across the river the water is then distributed through the fields during the dry season by the means of canal and distributaries broadly speaking the canals in india are of two types inundation canal and perennial canals before going ahead let's know something about these canals inundation canals are basically the flood canals these kinds of canals are mostly built when the rivers are flooded 
especially river satluj godavari we often see that these rivers are flooded during the rainy season to stop the overflow of water and to use that water and to store that water we have built inundation canals these canals are without are like without any control or something it is we can take an example when a vessel is filled with water and it starts overflowing the tub uh, kept around it underneath it, it the water start flowing in that particular tub and we use that water in that tub later on for some other purpose it is just like that so let's start these canals are taken out from the rivers without any regulating systems like weir and barrages like a no control over it at their head to regulate the flow of water a barrage is usually constructed in the lower course of the river in order to raise the level of water in the river it is hel- it helps to re- irrigate the lower regions for example i have already given faraka barrage another one is we have hathni kund also the canal are taken out from the rivers when they are in flood and these there is excess of water hence they are dependent on rains for the supply number 3 because these is, uh, type of canals are mostly used, used when the rivers are flooded we can use that water later on if the water is not evaporated of course only the lower level regions can irrigate by such canals as once the rainy season is over the flood subside the level of water falls below the level of canal ahead because of evaporation 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 is the most important process such a canal was taken out from the river satluj i have already given you the example which is prone to floods during the rainy season advantages inundation canals are easily and cheaply built they are useful in controlling floods we have also many other uh, advantages of canal like unirrigated wastelands can be developed by the canal irrigation the it can lead to the economic development of that area by avoiding droughts canals can fed by the rivers received by uh, sorry canals are fed by the river water received good water supply for the irrigation disadvantages there is uncertainty of water supply because these re- canals only get water when it is raining these canals are useful only during floods only low land areas can be irrigated means can get water the next one is perennial canals the most important part and the most important canals because these canals are useful throughout the air for example we have indira gandhi canal we have agra canal which have their water supply throughout the air because these water these canals are connected to the rivers which are perennial so here we can give many of the examples like i have already took uh, sorry spoken advantages like unirrigated irrigated wastelands can be developed by the canal irrigation by these types of canals next uh it can lead to the economic development of that area so let's read these canals are useful through the air as they draw their water from the perennial rivers artificial lakes or barrages constructed across the river these canals also act as a tourist attraction point these canals the water in these canals can use up for the fishing also producing of hydroelectricity uh, hydroelectricity also for navigation also as the canals serve throughout the air the agriculture production in the areas of less or uncertain rainfall has increased considerably considerably sorry for example rajasthan the water supply from indira gandhi canal is helping the farmers in rajasthan to grow crops as these canals supply water even during the hot season cultivation of some crops can be carried out around the air because the water supply it is there with the help of these canals we can also grow the crops which need more water so let's start up with the topic disadvantages of canal irrigation there are some disadvantages of canal irrigation like if there is rose there is thorns also due to the imbalance in the distribution of canal water the situation of scarcity can happen somewhere 
वाटर लॉगिंग इन इज द मेजर प्रॉब्लम ऑफ कैनाल इरीगेशन वाटर लॉगिंग इन अदर एरियाज इज कॉज ड्यू टू द कलेक्शन ऑफ वाटर देयर इट मेक्स सॉइल अनप्रोडक्टिव एज हार्मफुल अंडरग्राउंड सॉल्ट एंड अल्काइज कम्स टू द सर्फेस लेवल ड्यू टू द वाटर लॉगिंग इट कैन ऑल्सो मेक द लैंड माशी Many diseases are caused due to mosquitoes, worms, and insects on the account of stationary water in canals. So let's start with the reading. Problem of salt effluences due to the overflooding of the fields, which makes the soil unsuitable for farming. Mostly in northern part of our country, forty percent of land is cultivated with the help of canals. Due to the continuous irrigation, the salt is carried to the fields with water. the water here gets evaporated and the salt is left behind due to the continuous canal irrigation the amount of soil salt keeps on increasing in the soil and which is making the soil infertile in the coming years next we have problem of water logging in case of unlined canals that water soaks into adjoining areas turning them into swamps basically what happens is excessive seepage from unlined means kachcha canals and water courses results in the rise of water table leading into water logging means it is type of like a watershed as a water losses from the wells and canals continuously contribute to the water table basically it is developed due to the absence of proper outlet to drain excess irrigation water or water supply supply is because there is no particular regulation system and the water is collected in the field creating the swamp marshes or a watershed in that particular area to save the overflowing it is necessary to line the canals means to make the canals pakka with the bricks and mortar along the embankments it is expensive to construct such canals if i speak in a very layman language it is just to increase the height of the canals from the existing ground surface to avoid the water to overflow so an embankment refers to the volume of the earthen material that is placed compacted for the purpose of raising the grade of the canal above the level of existing ground surface is it is basically to avoid the change in a level required next we have irrigation by canal is more suitable in northern india as compared to the south india due to following reasons we have already talked because we have perennial rivers here we have fertile soil it is very easy to dug canals we have flat and fertile soil flat land and fertile soil because it is very easy to dug canals in that particular area plus it is an agricultural area it needs more water so if the demand is more that supply is also there irrigation by canal is more suitable in northern india as compared to the south due to the following reasons the rivers of the northern pl plains are perennial means that are flowing throughout the air as they are snow fed because they are starting up from the glaciers which is present in a himadri range of the himalayas wherever whereas in southern india the rivers are seasonal because they are fed by the rain the surface of the northern plains is flat and soft and hence it easy to dig the wells in south the region being rocky and is difficult to dig because it is very difficult to cut hard rocks the demand of irrigation is greater in the northern part of india that we have already told that the major basins are present in the northern part of india if we talk about indus basin we can talk about ganga basin we can talk about brahmaputra basin as it is predominantly an agriculture region where the proportion of arable suitable for cultivation land is higher due to the high fertility of soil than other areas of the country so student this was our topic for the day please try to solve the related question answers